shall not Who 
around me Encampments all around me Protection around me wonderful adult ensemble that have blessed us with Jehovah Shabbat. We, we are reminded that we serve a God who will fight for us. And uh, thank you all for that wonderful, wonderful reminder. I want to, for the time that is mine, to call your attention. Uh, this is graduation Sunday, and I want to hopefully and prayerfully give a word of inspiration to our graduates in particular and to all of us uh, as followers of Jesus Christ in general and to those who may not be sure about a relationship with God through Christ to give you some insight on why we've connected with this man named Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 4 starting at verse 13 through verse 25. And today, I'm going to read from a different translation of Scripture. I want to read from the message translation because I think that um, this particular passage, this particular version would give us a better appreciative uh, understanding of what Paul was writing. And it reads like this, starting at verse, 10, verse 13 in the message translation. That famous promise God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. If those who get what God gives them only to get it by doing everything they are told to do and filling out all the right forms properly signed, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns that promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's a business deal. A contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer and with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise, and God's promise at that, you can't break it. This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise all arrives as pure gift. It is the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. For Abraham is father of us all. He is not our racial father. That's reading the story backwards. He is our faith father. We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we always read in scripture? God said to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. And Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do only what God could do, raise the dead to life with a word making something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, 
deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham did not focus on his impotence and said, it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He did not tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what God said. That's why it is said Abraham declared fit, was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. But it is not just Abraham. It is us also. The same thing gets said about us who, when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless, the sacrifice Jesus made us fit for God, set us right with God. I want to preach for the time that is mine, living beyond your limits. Living beyond your limits. This is Graduate Sunday, and we come to celebrate those who have graduated from high school and from college. We come to celebrate those who have received uh, master degrees and specialist degrees and doctoral degrees. We come to celebrate those who have graduated from community college and got their associate degree. We come to lift up and thank God because for quite a few of you all, you have exceeded limits as far as your life is concerned. You've gone beyond what you thought you could do, but certainly what others thought you would achieve. And yet, regardless of whether you are a graduate or you're just trying to make it through this thing called life, we find ourselves right now dealing with some trying circumstances in our current reality that if we're not careful, has the ability to cripple our resolve and hinder our purpose due to the uncertainty of those things we thought were stable and trustworthy. Somewhere in our past, most of us drank the proverbial Kool-Aid, and now we are sick and suffering because we believe the hype the culture gave us. We were told that if you go to school, if you work real hard, keep your nose clean, then you will do well in today's world. We were told, make investments in your 401ks and the stock market so you can have retirement income and savings. We were told, buy a house because it's one of the surest commodities you will ever have. We were told, make sure you take care of yourself, eat healthy, exercise so you can do well as far as your body is concerned. The unfortunate reality is uh, that right now, under the sound of my breath and those that are watching us live stream, a whole lot of you all have done everything by the book and find yourself on the short end of life. The unfortunate reality is I have persons who have graduated from college and can't find a job. Protests across this country around this world against racism and police oppression have brought light to things black folks have been dealing with for 400 years. We have been well acquainted with being despised because of the color of our skin. We know what it's like to lose a job because of race. We know what it's like to not be able to live in a certain neighborhood because of our race or to be denied a bank loan because of our race, or to have our health concerns dismissed because of our race, or to deal with environmental injustice because of our race, or to have people think we are a thief because of our race, or to have people think we lack intelligence because of our race, or being constantly harassed and arrested 
because of our race. The slips and the underwear of the racists are showing. COVID-19 is worsening in the United States even as I speak. Americans have been banned to travel to the European Union. Isn't that something? We who are supposed to be uh, the brightest and most educated, the most sophisticated country in the world, we look more like a third world country right now, Mr. 46 minus one. We have nearly 10 million infections worldwide and 500 deaths with the United States leading the way as far as that's concerned with 25% of these deaths. The craziness being perpetuated through conspiracy theorists about wearing masks and physical distancing and avoiding mass gatherings is gonna keep us in a mess. I don't think we're gonna see any real progress or return to some sense of functionality until maybe, maybe the spring of 2021. We are enduring some tough times. Now, I would readily admit you can wallow in despair and curse the darkness with a war is me attitude or you can take what is happening on the national landscape and the global scene as an opportunity to make some necessary changes that will place you in line with the shakeup that God is creating. You can allow yourself to become limited by this pandemic or position yourself to reap benefits which is more than economics. If you want to achieve your dreams, realize visions, aspire for higher heights, and do the impossible in a time when talk like this seems insensible and illogical, you got to learn how to operate from a position of faith. If you're not willing to, if you're willing to go beyond the limits of your life and exceed what you have, it will not be predicated upon your education, socialization, political affiliation, or status. It will have to be based upon your faith in the God you cannot see. Our ability to recognize, receive, and rejoice in what God has done, in what God is doing, and in what God will do in our lives is based upon faith alone. The God we serve is keenly aware of what's happening in our everyday life and is preparing a wonderful setup for us even in a pandemic situation coupled with social upheaval because of racism and police brutality. Yes, God is alive. Yes, God is active. Yes, God is able, but you and I will not be able to appreciate and apply these truths or walk in this power unless we have faith. In fact, God has already given you victory. Yes, God has already released your miracle. Yes, God has already declared your deliverance. But you can't get it unless you have faith. God has been good to you, and the Lord is blessing you even right now. And I would dare say in 2020, the best is still yet to come. Your breakthrough is right around the corner, but you can't shout about it unless you have faith. Faith is the necessary component for us to go beyond the limits of our living that have been set for us and others have placed on us. In fact, when you look at everything around you and everything existing right now, it is here because somebody somewhere had faith. You don't live in the reality you have just based upon great ideas or new inventions or political risk or social critique. Somebody had to have faith their idea would work. Somebody had to have faith. Their invention would be successful. Somebody had to have faith. Their risk would be worth it. Somebody had to have faith. Their critique will make a difference. You can't do something that has never been done without faith, which gives the capacity to exceed what you are accustomed to doing. That's why we have cars, trains, planes, rockets, and satellites. This is why we have computers, iPhones, iPads, Samsung notebooks, and Galaxy phones, and navigation systems. This is why we have beautiful high-rise architecture, luscious landscapes where there were trash dumps, and the ability 
to see billions of light years into space. It required faith. When Martin Luther went to Wittenberg and nailed his 95 complaints against the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church, therefore starting the Protestant Reformation, it was by faith. When Copernicus proposed that the earth revolved around the sun and not the other way around, it was by faith. When Galileo tested the telescope and discovered other planetary bodies like the rings around Saturn and moons around Jupiter, it was by faith. When the Puritans fled England because of religious persecution and rode the Mayflower through the storms on the Atlantic to Plymouth, Massachusetts, it was by faith. When Harriet Tubman led 300 slaves to freedom with a Bible and a pistol, it was by faith. When Thomas Edison and that black man, Louis Latimer, invented the light bulb, it was by faith. When Martin Luther King Jr. spoke against the Vietnam War, being ridiculed by blacks and whites alike, but he was on the right side of history, it was by faith. When Nelson Mandela did not bend or break in a prison on Robbins Island, only to be released and become South Africa's first black president, it was by faith. When a skinny black guy with a funny name, with a white mama and a Kenyan daddy, became the first black president of the United States, it was by faith. When a black car, NASCAR driver named Bubba told NASCAR the Confederate flags need to go, it was by faith. When protesters marched against systemic racism and police brutality and the relics to white supremacy began to fall, even in the state of Mississippi, they are finally getting rid of the Confederate emblem on the flag. It was by faith. And when a man hung on a Christ, on a cross between two thieves on a Friday afternoon, buried in a borrowed tomb and got up from the grave three days later and declared, I got all power in my hand. It was by faith. If you're going to exceed any limit in your reality, you got to do it by faith. I want to suggest to you, this is what the Apostle Paul presents as he hammers out his thesis for the following example of Abraham. We all have heard of Abraham, and for those of you who have not, Abraham is in the Bible in the book of Genesis, and Abraham really becomes the progenitor for the nation of Israel. Abraham is considered to be the father of many nations. As a matter of fact, those who practice Christianity and Judaism and Islam all of them trace their roots back to this man named Abraham. Abraham heard the voice of God and stepped out on faith, going to a land for which he had no direction. Abraham was willing to trust God all the way on his journey. Abraham did not have a map. Abraham did not have a GPS system. Abraham did not have a navigation system. All he did was obey what he perceived to be the voice of God. Sure, he made some mistakes along the way. Sure, he had some blunders along the map. Uh, but Abraham's relationship with God was not based upon his righteousness. It was not based upon him dotting every I nor crossing every T. But it was based upon the grace of God in his life. God made a promise to Abraham and to Abraham's offspring how they would one day inherit the earth. Therefore, the promise God made to Abraham was not dependent upon Abraham keeping a whole bunch of rules. It was based upon Abraham's faith. The law did not have the ability to make the promise of God valid and real. But Abraham's faith is what made this thing real. Interestingly, the very thing the Jews have been depending on to make them acceptable to God turned out to emphasize their sinfulness. The law reveals their shortcomings. The law demonstrates the lack of their innate ability to do everything that God had commanded them to do. The law was a catch-22 situation because every time they got one aspect of the law right, they failed in another area of the law, which means that the area they had right becomes null and void. Why is that? Because it was the common assertion 
that if you violated one commandment of the law, you violated all of them. This law thing was difficult to sustain. And it helped the Jews to understand that they are just like the Gentiles uh, in need uh, of the grace of God. The law reveals that all have sinned and fallen short uh, of the glory of God. So the relationship Abraham has with God is not predicated upon the law, but is based upon faith. God lets Abraham have a divine connection, not based upon money, not based upon education, family lineage, social status, political affiliation, or neighborhood association. The hookup is based upon Abraham's faith and a promise made by a God he never saw, but all he heard, and he believed that God is no shorter than his word. Abraham could not mess up the promise no matter how hard he tried because God chose Abraham it was not the other way around I want to let you all know that if we were to describe Abraham uh, into today's terms if you were to look at the limitations and the deficits that Abraham had uh, Abraham was messed up from the floor up uh, if Abraham was alive today he'll be described as an AARP card carrying social security receiving Medicare Medicaid accepting Bengay ointment applying just for men, gray solution hair washing, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra pill popping self, how he was going to be the father of many nations. This is a problem because Abraham and Sarah were past childbearing age. To complicate matters even further, after God had dropped this major momentous promise on Abraham, it didn't come to pass until another 14 years later. Now, if there was ever a couple who had the odds stacked against them, it was certainly Abraham and Sarah. They didn't fit the profile of being the father and the mother of many nations. Their time had passed. They were considered to be old and outdated. They were looking forward to retirement when God invaded their reality and proclaimed, I got something else for you to do. I'm not through with you yet. You're going to be the father and the mother of many nations. You're going to have so many descendants. It's going to be like the stars in the sky. So many until you will not be able to count. If this is going to occur, it will require for Abraham and Sarah to rise above their restrictions, transcend their confinements, and go beyond their limits. They were limited by age, social conditions, and barrenness. And there are some of us who are limited by age, socioeconomic conditions, or lack of education. Some of us limited because we were born on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, some of us limited because we've been incarcerated. Some of us limited because we did not have a mother or a father when we were growing up. Some of us limited because we did not finish high school. Some of us limited because we did not go to college. Some of us are limited because of racism, the wrong skin color, sexism, the wrong gender, classism, the wrong financial level. Some of us are limited by our own negative perceptions of a devalued self-worth, which has us thinking we can't do anything because of our past, or we can't succeed because we lack certain skills, or we will not be able to attain the desires of our heart. However, there's a word that Paul gives us, insight, that if Abraham can do it and he had the odds stacked against him then you and I can do it even when the odds are stacked against us how can we go beyond the limits of life which makes us feel like this is the best we can have right now I want to suggest when you look at the text first of all realize the God that loves us has divine sized dreams for our life this is best described in verses 13 and 14 because when you look at Abraham, you will notice God enters into Abraham's life with two things. The first thing is how Abraham will inherit a land that God will show him. Second, that Abraham will be the father of many nations. This is not something Abraham had imagined. 
when he was hanging out in Haran with his daddy Terah. He was part of a family that worshipped idols. And God stepped into his reality and blows his mind by promising him land acquisition and a large family. Abraham moves not by what he can see, but Abraham moves by a word he hears. And that word has been delivered from the God that speaks into existence that which Abraham could not imagine. Yet Abraham had to believe it was possible because if Abraham did not believe it was possible, he would have stayed in Haran with his daddy worshiping idol God. Check this out. Faith begins with a picture, a mental image, a dream, a vision of something which does not exist and seems rather impossible to come to fruition. God had to show Abram a visual perspective of a faith proposition. And this is what God told Abram. This is what he said. Here's something, Abraham, you can visualize. Abraham, every night you go out and you look up into the skies and you can say this is going to be the size of my family. The entire Jewish nation came from the loins of Abraham. And later God would change Abram's name to Abraham for he would be the father of many nations. And this happened when Abraham was a hundred years old. This requires major faith because God's dreams for your life has to become part of your imagination to see things others cannot see, to do things others will not do, and to believe things that others will not believe. God has to stretch your imagination by giving you a dream, a vision, what can you see yourself doing that you thought you never could do? What can you conceive and believe you can achieve? Faith starts by stretching your imagination to hook up with God's dream for your life. Faith is not past oriented, but it is future focused. Faith is you visualizing what your future is in your present. I know there are certain things you can't see in your present, but God has shown them to you. You can't see how you're going to get the degree, but you saw the degree hanging on your wall. You can't see how you're going to get the house, but you saw yourself in your own living room. You can't see how you're going to make it, but you saw yourself as successful. There are some things you can't see in your present, but God is showing you something, and you got to take the initiative to make the dream God has for you your reality. So what is it that you got to do? You got to go to school. You got to get an education. You got to prepare yourself. You got to read a book. You got to get out of debt. You got to pay off your credit cards. Listen to self-improvement tapes. Go to Bible study. Join a church. Get into the word of God. Pray to our God. Fast every now and then. Give God some praise and worship the Lord of the universe. If you do some of those things, I guarantee God will blow your mind with the things that God has for your life. But then... Do what you can do and trust God to fill in the gaps. That's in verses 17, 17 through 22. We see that God is a gap filler. In other words, beloved, don't focus on your weakness, but operate in your strength. Abraham had several strikes against him. Number one, his age. He was old. Number two, where he came from. His daddy was an idol worshiper. Number three, his wife's barrenness. And then number four, his mistake to try to jump ahead of God. But what Abraham had, in spite of all of that, was faith. And this is how Abraham operated in his reality. What scriptures consider as faith is defined by the confidence of Abraham in the very promises of God. Abraham's faith is seen in the contrasting phrases against all hope and in hope. From a human standpoint, there was no hope. 
that he would have descendants. And yet with God, all things are possible. Therefore, Abraham believed what God said would come to pass. Abraham believed what God said would come into fruition. And Abraham's hope was not in the invincible human spirit to rise to the occasion against all odds. But his hope, his faith was in the inner confidence that God is no shorter than his word. In other words, Abraham believed that if God said it, that should settle it. Because Abraham believed, Abraham became. Abraham was fully aware that his body was as good as dead. He's a hundred years old, you all. Sarah is past childbearing age. From a common sense human perspective, there is not the slightest chance that they would have any children. But Abraham somehow kept the faith. And his faith went beyond his human capacity. In acknowledging the existence of the God who is not bound by the limitations of our created order, wherever God is, is, there is nothing outside of the realm of possibility and the church of Jesus Christ is in desperate need of those who will insist that God is able to bring to pass anything that is consistent with the nature of God and in concert with God's redemptive purposes the problem with the church that it is filled with people whose view of God is too small if you want to know what faith without works look like is dead, then all you got to do is look at Abraham. Abraham knew, uh, yes, I got faith, uh, but I still got to do my part. And if I do my part, I believe that God will show up uh, and do God's part. In order for Abraham uh, to get the land, uh, Abraham had to leave his daddy's house and start walking. In order for Abraham and Sarah to have a child, they had to at least engage in lovemaking every now and then. And the same thing has to happen for you and I. That if we want the promises of God to come to pass, we got to do our part and let God fill in the gaps. If you want a job, you better put in an application. If you want to pass the test, open up your book and study. If you want to improve your credit rating, you got to pay off your debts. If you want to have a good marriage, be a good spouse if you want to get closer to God get in God's word and among God's people if you want systemic changes in our society keep fighting against the status quo through protests marching raising your voice filling out the census registering the votes going out to vote and staying on those who have been elected if you want to grow in your faith get down on your knees and start talking to God and if you want to experience the presence of God I dare you to be crazy enough to lift up holy hands cry out with a loud voice and worship the God of the universe uh, but one more thing that I want to remind you of that if you want to have a life beyond your limits you got to connect to Jesus who goes beyond the limits of this world connect your life to Jesus who goes beyond the limits of this world let me say it one more time connect your life to Jesus, who's God in the flesh, who goes beyond the limits of this world. This is the shout for me in this whole text. And it's found right there in verses 23 through 25. This is where, this is where Paul zooms in and says, I've been talking about Father Abraham. Now I want to talk about Jesus Christ because Jesus had the odds stacked against him. Abraham trusts God when it did not make any sense to trust God. And when you understand that Abraham did not give way to unbelief, but rather Abraham's faith was strengthened during his times of testing. And during the times of testing, he took God at his word. And when he took God at his word, God got the glory. Faith is strong precisely because it looks solely to God and not upon human ability. It is not that faith ignores or denies historical realities. Rather, Paul says, Abraham took them fully into account, which is why his faith 
can be called strong. Abraham took fully into account that he was old. Abraham took fully into account that the odds were stacked against him. Abraham took fully into account that his wife, Sarah, was married. Abraham took fully into account that he was past what society said could be accomplished. He had all of that, but Abraham was convicted and convinced by the promise that God, if he said it, can bring it to pass. This is what faith has to be if you're going to live a life beyond your limits. It was a faith so convinced and so convicted how God could bring life out of something dead and accomplish what is humanly impossible. Because the reference to Abraham and Sarah's body is that they were physically dead. There's no life in neither one of them that there is nothing as far as Abraham's functionality as far as his manhood was concerned that would bring about life there was nothing in Sarah's femininity as far as her womanhood was concerned that they could bring life you got two dead folks trying to come together and produce something lifelike when they didn't have the capacity to produce anything lifelike but it was a God who is beyond their uh, experiences and the God that was beyond their limits that took both of their dead bodies and brought something to life out of their dead barren situations and this is where the shift uh, happens for us when we make the shift to Jesus Christ because we know that Jesus Christ uh, is uh, the one uh, that was raised from the dead uh, and that God gave life uh, out of an impossible situation our faith uh, will be regarded in the same light uh, because God will credit righteousness to us as well. Verse 23 through 25 shows us that when you have faith in the Jesus Christ who was resurrected from the dead, you have faith uh, in the one that can make a difference in your life. This was the central theme uh, of the gospel message, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is what the apostles preached uh, nearly 2,000 years ago, that Jesus Christ was crucified and God raised him from the dead. But it has to be, y'all, the way we live our life. You and I must understand that, that our life has to be lived, watch this, from a perspective of having Jesus in our life. And not just some Jesus, but the one that God has raised from the dead. This is because God gives us the ability to do things that others said that's impossible. Because if God can raise Jesus from the dead, then God can do anything. And that's where a whole lot of us are right now. Some of us find ourselves limited uh, from a crisis that happened a while ago. A shameful problem from our past. Uh, we went through divorce and we feel like we'll never find love again. We've been bankrupt and we think we can never have good credit again. We've had a major embarrassment that everybody in the church knew about. Uh, but faith is speaking to you right now. And faith is saying to you, yeah, you messed up in your past. Yes, you didn't dot every I in your past. Yes, you didn't cross every T in your past. Yes, you've made some blunders along the way, but we are not here to focus on your past because we got something better for your future. I don't know who the whom I'm preaching to that's in the house right now or watching me live stream, but I am here to let somebody know that you can't be so consumed by your past until you miss out on the promises God has for your future. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be future oriented and not stuck in my past. I want to see what God has in store for my life because if I'm moving and if I'm breathing and if the blood is running warm in my veins, then God ain't through with me yet. I want to see what God will have for me to become. Not what I have been and not what I am right now, but what God wants to do in my life. In other words, I'm not going to be satisfied 
with the status quo, uh, but I'm going to move uh, and press forward toward those things which are ahead. When you have faith in God uh, and it's based upon the resurrected Jesus Christ, it will give you access to the powers and the purpose and the provisions uh, and the promises uh, of the almighty God. How do you break out of patterns of procrastination? How do you get out of your rut? How do you take some risk? How do you expect for the best? How do you wait for an answer? How do you live beyond your limits? You got to live your life with Jesus Christ in it. The mess you must be going through right now ain't nothing compared to the promises that God has in store for you. That means, beloved, that if you're watching me, live stream that means my sisters and brothers if you're listening to me in the sanctuary you got to be willing to engage in a faith that looks crazy to everybody else but you know what God has dropped in your spirit you got to be willing to engage in a faith that looks stupid to everybody else but you know the promises that God has dropped in your spirit because when you are connected to the living Lord Jesus Christ you're connected to the some that God can do anything through. This means that even though you're limited by your personal deficits, even though you're limited by your economic status, even though you're limited by emotional fatigue, even though you're limited by psychological weariness, even though you're limited by academic shortcomings, even though you're limited by your negative circumstances, if you look to Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith uh, then you hook up with the one uh, that is able to do exceedingly above anything you ask uh, think or imagine I don't know who this word is for you can have whoever you want to but I'm sticking with Jesus uh, you can do whatever you want to uh, but I'm sticking with Jesus uh, you can roll with whoever you want to uh, but I'm sticking with Jesus uh, you can flow however you want to uh, but I'm sticking with Jesus uh, because when we're hungry uh, Jesus is bread of heaven when we're thirsty uh, Jesus is water in dry places when we are sad he is our joy uh, when we are lost uh, he is our guide uh, when we are afraid uh, he is our security uh, when we are poor he is our riches when we are hurt he is our healing when we are needy he is our supply when we are fighting he is our battle axe when we are bound he is our freedom when we are wounded he is our balm and gilead when we are dying he's the resurrection and the life when we are singing he is our music when we are teaching he is our example when we are praying he is our intercessor when we are worshiping he is our God uh, and I don't know who I'm talking to uh, but I'm going to stick with Jesus uh, because Jesus becomes uh, the very one that shows me how uh, to live above uh, and beyond my limits uh, you can have the cares of this world uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have gold and silver uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have your fine car uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have your mansion on a hill uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have admission uh, into the fine clubs of society but give me Jesus uh, you can have your fraternity and sorority but give me Jesus uh, you can have your fancy church buildings uh, but give me Jesus uh, because do I have anybody uh, that know that Jesus uh, is the best thing uh, that ever has happened to me uh, why can I shout uh, and why can I give praise uh, about this Jesus uh, because he was hung up for my hangups uh, he was messed up uh, for my mistakes uh, he died uh, on an old rugged cross uh, run Friday afternoon uh, the devil thought he had him uh, the grave thought he secured him uh, death knew he got him uh, but he stayed in that grave uh, all night Friday night uh, he stayed in that grave uh, all day Saturday he stayed in the grave uh, all night Saturday night uh, but do I have anybody uh, that's watching me uh, on live stream uh, they ain't afraid to shout uh, at the computer or phone uh, or your television uh, early 
good God Almighty. I said early, early, early. One Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, from the grave uh, with all power uh, in his hand. Uh, but thanks be to God, uh, he didn't stop there. Uh, he stayed around uh, for 40 more days uh, teaching his disciples uh, what they needed to know. Uh, and on that 40th day, uh, he ascended uh, into heaven, uh, told his disciples, uh, go wait in Galilee, uh, in Jerusalem, because uh, I'm going to send you something uh, that's going to help you on your journey and on the 10th day after his ascension the Holy Ghost fell and gave them power power to preach power to teach power to live power to love power to heal power to forgive power to lift power to serve power to run power to preach power to worship power to praise Power to sing, power to minister, power to do mission. Is there anybody here that know you got power to live beyond your limits? So whatever the devil throws your way, tell the devil, tell society, tell the culture, throw your best shot because he that's within me is greater than the world around me. Is there anybody that ain't afraid to give God praise? Cause you can go beyond your limit. You can go beyond. You can go beyond. You can go beyond. You can go beyond your limit. Oh yes you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Ask. Ask any person that you know the doctor said we've done all we can and they're still alive. Ask any person who's had so many doors closed in her face until she wanted to give up and look at where she is in business right now. Ask. Ask any child who is differently able why they did not give up. And you will see God operating to take them beyond their limits. We all, <laughs> we all have limits. We all have limits. Let me just say that before. We all got limits. But we serve a God who can help us to push beyond those limits. I want to invite you to have a moment of word of prayer at this time, and I want to lead you to a net connection with the God who will help you to move beyond your limits, even right now. Even with all this craziness going on, we serve a God who is still moving and operating and empowering and flowing as far as our limits are concerned. As a matter of fact, Paul put it best. And Paul said, in my weakness, his strength is perfected. I want to lead you in a prayer, a prayer of new life, a prayer of a brand new start. And if this prayer makes sense with you, I want you to connect with God through confessing faith in Jesus Christ, the one who really is the limit breaker and will help you transcend your limits. So if you would, wherever you are right now, just bow your heads. For all of us who have that relationship with God, it's a reminder of that covenant. But for those who do not, or for those who are seeking a reaffirmation, a connection, I'm going to ask you soon to make a decision. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. And repeat after me, God, I thank you for allowing me to hear this word and I believe that you are able to help me live beyond my limits I come to you because I want a relationship with you I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins I believe 
you raised him from the dead. Three days later, I believe that one day he will return. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Help me be the person you want me to be. And God, do your great thing in my life. I submit to you right now in the name of your son Jesus, my Savior and my Lord. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time in your life, you mean that you want a relationship with God? You have it right now. Is it really that easy? Sure. If you believe in your head and your heart, if you believe in your mind and your spirit, you're trusting those words and you're placing your confidence in God, then salvation is yours. It's really that easy. You're not saved based upon your works. You're saved by faith because of God's grace. And if that's you right now and you want that relationship with God and you want to become a part of the Lord's church, particularly here at St. Paul, you could do several things. Number one, you can type salvation. If you're on Facebook, one of our digital ministers will send you a private message. If you're on our website, click on salvation button in the chat window. If you're on telephone, email us, connect at St. Paul, uh, sbpcbcnc.org, or you could call the church office. If you want to join by Christian Experience, you can join us on YouTube, connect at sbbcnc.org. Uh, if you are watching us, as far as Facebook is concerned, just type connect on our Facebook page or connect on our website. Or if you want to join by watch care, which means that you're here on a temporary assignment, you don't want to give up your church home, but you want to roll with us until you return home, you can type watch care or follow those same prompts that I've just mentioned to you and uh, join us as far as that's concerned. We are about to close today's worship experience. I want you to share your worship profile. I want you to uh, send hearts or thumbs up if this has been a blessing to you. Or if you have a concern, you may be able to share that as well. We're getting ready to close out, but as we close out, please stay online and check out our wonderful graduates as far as graduation Sunday is concerned. And let's be giving them a word of encouragement. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless for the presence of his glory with all exceeding joy. To the only wise Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. And God loves you and so do I. Amen. Follow us this week to check out what's happening here at St. Paul. God bless you. God loves you and so do I. his presence. I thank God for his power. I thank God for his... Don't believe. I don't believe that he brought me this far to leave me. You ought to tell somebody. 